Hey guys, and welcome back to hell. Today, I want to discuss something from you. Now, some of you may or may not know, I used to work at Games Workshop. I started there in late, no, early 98. So I was 18, I started there. It was like my second job ever next to working in a, uh, in a, in a bakery, working with making pies and mash and... Here in England, we have a, 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 a milk called pie and mash with like liquor and stuff and whatnot. The company I used to work for was called Manzies. That was my first ever official job. Before then, I was an apprentice with my uncles and whatnot, learning electricians, plumbing, painting, decorating, plastering, you name it. But my first official job that I actually really enjoyed was working retail at Games Workshop. And I was stationed at the Plaza store in Games Workshop. Now, initially, I started off <clears throat> as a mystery shopper, which means Games Workshop paid me to go into their store and buy a product to test their floor staff to see how they would react to someone trying to buy something. And let's just say they were not happy with what I gave them back as feedback. And they asked me, what would I like to see? And I said, hire me and you'll see. So that's how I got in. Now, don't get me wrong. I couldn't paint models for shit at first. Now, you've seen some of my Gret and Kling ones and my Mortarions and whatnot, and I will put some, some still pictures of some of my paint miniatures I've painted here. Now, um, when I was working at Games Workshop, I was what's known as a scout, which basically means in, 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 in 40k terms, there's the scouts. I don't think they're still around anymore, but they used to wear shirts that were... Games Workshop staff used to wear red shirts, one, and the managers would wear black shirts. Okay, the red shirts were known as scouts. Okay, that's how old and I mean Paul Sawyer was my boss at the time. Paul Sawyer has not been at, been with Games Workshop since I think 1998. No, 19, uh, 2009, 2008. So that should tell you. I mean, hell, the White Scars Space Marines chapter is Paul Sawyer's. Seriously, Paul Sawyer came up with the whole premise and idea and everything else about the White Scars. That's it. If it wasn't for Paul Sawyer, a.k.a. The Fat Bloke, that was his nickname, The Fat Bloke, if it wasn't for him, the White Scars wouldn't exist. Jagatai Khan wouldn't exist. The White Scars just would not exist. They would not be a thing. You can go back to some of the original Games Workshop magazines and you'll see what I'm talking about. If it wasn't for Paul Sawyer, there would be no White Scars. Now, that's how old, long ago it's been. It's 2025 now, so it's been quite a while since I last walked into a Games Workshop store wearing an employee shirt. Now, that said, that said, I do have some friends who still work at Games Workshop, and they get rotated from store to store to store to store to store. Now, I know in the early, I think it was like the, the I think it was like 2010, 2011, during the first recession that England had, Games Workshop just started slashing stores closing them left right and center to save money and plaza my old store was one of them even though plaza was quite literally their flagship store we had regent street we had oxford we had oxford uh, oxford circus regent street plaza um and i know i'm missing one or two and then we had tower bridge and, a, and another one well tower bridge went plaza went and i think the one on regent street went i think don't hold me to that i think and if they brought them back, great. If they didn't, anyway. Last time, uh, so long story short, some of my old my old mates, Al, Scott, John, Paul, my manager, they're all gone. I remember my manager at the time, Paul, bit of a chubby guy, bald, balding. He left Games Workshop to go work for Rent a Kill because Rent a Kill was paying their employees, their basic level employees, more than what management was getting paid. And Games Workshop thinks giving their staff a 50% discount, and now I think they've lowered it to like 20%. At the time, it used to be 50%. Now they've lowered that because some of the staff used to get their discounts, buy a whole bunch of stuff, and then throw it on eBay and make a shit ton of money off of eBay. That's what I used to do. I'm not going to lie. I would go in, I would spend about 30% of my paycheck on mail order stuff, wait for it to come in, still in the boxes, still with the barcode, still with everything, straight from Games Workshop. All I would do was just take a black Sharpie, literally, 
I would take a, a, a freaking black sharpie and sharpie out my name in the store on the barcode and then throw it right up on eBay at full price and they would just sell. And I would just reap the profits. That's what I did to make up for my lack of pay. The Games Workshop refused to pay us. They paid us under minimum wage. Let that sink in. They broke the law. And when they got caught breaking the law, and they have, you can even look this up, they got caught breaking the law, they then just started to pay us a livable, they, they paid us minimum wage, which is supposed to be a livable wage. It's not. It's not. Now, at that time, I had a girlfriend, you know, who's now my, my baby's mama, you know, I, I had a girlfriend at the time. And I couldn't even afford to take her to McDonald's and get a fucking Big Mac meal. That's how broke I was. But that didn't matter. That didn't care. And I learned a lot of business acumen from the management. I learned a lot of sales techniques from the highest, the, the longer running staff that had been there. I learned painting techniques. I learned so many things. What I gained back in lack in lieu of cash payment, I got back in skills. And I took that skills and I applied it to my other fields, to my own business. Okay? When I moved to America, I owned my own automotive business. And it was successful. I started off doing oil changes, tire rotations, transmission filter replacements, just the basic maintenance that other people just did not have the time to do. So they would throw their keys to me when they went off to, to, to grub box and got their lunch or went off to, to JB's and got their lunch. And if you know, if you live in Utah, you know grub box, rest in peace, is no longer there. And you know JB's, okay? While they were there getting their, their, their lunch, I was working on their vehicles. And by the time they were done, their vehicle was back, parked, ready and waiting filter had a date on it mileage on it everything else for the next poor guy please for the love of god if you work in the automotive industry and you're changing filters and shit take a fucking sharpie it's not hard take a sharpie write on the filter the date the mileage you will literally make the next mechanic's life a lot easier thank you that's exactly what i used to do date and mileage on the filters date and mileage on the transfer case Date and mileage on the transmission, bell housing, with a little smiley face sometimes, if I had time. And I guaranteed I had repeat business every 6,000, every 8,000, every 9,000, every 10,000 miles, customers would come back to me. And they would say, can you take a look at my front bearings, please? I'm hearing a bit of a squeak. You got it. Pull the tire off, give it a shake, find out, yeah, you, your upper ball joint's going out. I can't replace it because I don't have a, a, a hydraulic press, but... Mike over at freaking, you know, wherever, he can do it for you for a discount. Give him this card. I helped scratch Mike's back. He scratches mine by sending me his lighter, lighter grunt work, i.e. oil changes, things of that nature. E e even even things like spot welds on, on, on mufflers that he would that would have failed inspection. He brings them to me because he knows I just hook up my little weld, just zap, 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 loom shit back, done. Take it back for re-inspection. Boom, done, you passed. That's how we work. We weren't enemies. We were friends. And I also buy, used to buy and flip cars and trucks. Now, what that means is in the state of Utah, if you sell more than five vehicles in a month, you have to have a dealership license. But if you don't, guess what? No, no dealership license is required. That is the law. You can do it within the law. Now, what I used to do was I would buy trucks in the summer because no one wants to drive a gas guzzling truck during the summer. They want to drive their... Mustangs, Camaros, their GTOs, their Corvettes. They want to drive cars with the top down, tits out, and be happy. So they would sell their pickups because they didn't need them because there's no snow on the road. There's no ice on the road. There's no nothing on the road. So they didn't need their pickups. They needed their Corvettes. They needed their Camaros. They needed their Mustangs. They needed their Trans Ams. They needed their, they needed their sports cars. And so I would buy their trucks, hold on to them, they would be literally parked in my backyard. I, at, at one point, I had about 15 to 20 trucks. It looked like a car park in my backyard. All tarped. Every single one of them tarped. And the moment the snow hit, first thing I would do is grab the first two trucks, park them in my front, my, front of my garden, my front of my yard, with a for sale sign on them. Moment they sold next to. Moments they sold next to. Moment 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 they sold next to. And 
I would only ever sell two a month, maybe three, but I would also take trades. So what they would do is they would come to me with their Mustang, with their Camaro, with their Corvette, with their whatever, whatever sports car they had at the time. Snow's on the ground, so they can't drive it anymore. And they would say, I got this and I got two grand cash. I'd be like, okay, that's enough to get you this Chevy 1500 or that 1500 Ram. That Ram's four that Ram's four wheel drive, that Chevy's two wheel drive, but that that Chevy two wheel drive's got a diesel in it, yada yada. Now and I would explain to them what they had. And people would say, I'll take the four wheel drive. So they'll take the four wheel drive, I'll take his his car, park his car literally right in the same spot as where the truck was parked. Throw a tarp over it. Leave it there. I'd disconnect the battery, of course, and drain the radiator. Because you don't want it free you don't want that shit to freeze. Just pop, pop, done. Basic stuff to make sure that the vehicle doesn't have any issues for when you put new fluids in it and fire it back up. And that's exactly what I did. I drained the petrol tank. I drained everything. So there was no issues. No bad gas. No nothing. And then guaranteed. Moment of snow melts. All of a sudden, I'm looking at freaking Facebook. I'm looking at Craigslist. I'm looking at all these places. Pickup truck. And I know where the guy lives. He literally, it's my pickup truck he bought from me. I'll go to him. I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? You want this truck, you're selling it for four grand, yeah? Well, you bought it from me for two. Your car's only worth this. Yada, yada, yada. Not knowing I've already sold his car to another guy. And that's the thing. I would sell the cars during the... I'd buy the cars, the cars during the winter and sell the pickups and then buy the pickups during the summer and sell the cars. I would rotate the stock. You see what I'm saying? And that was always a guaranteed source of income for me. To the point where people would come to me with cars that didn't even run. And I'm like, why would I want a fucking Mazda Miata? Why would I why would I want a Pontiac Fiaro? Mm. The Fiaro I did pick up. Turn that sucker into I gave it to a guy, turn it into a kit car for something. Now, what is this all about? Let me get to what this is all about. This is about something that's going on at Gangs Workshop. Gangs Workshop, and I'll I'll move my, my camera out like, real quick. GW are in trouble. And what I mean by that is this article is from City uh, AM or CityAM.com. There are. Now, again, this is a, a document you can see online. It's part of. All, all share. If it's a publicly traded company, you can look at what the shareholders make. Okay? And. The majority of the uh, of the shareholders are pissed at the main uh, uh, AGM of Games Workshop because he cleared a hundred and fifty percent base of his base salary as a bonus. Okay, not knowing, and this is the thing: even the CEO and the CFO got a bonus of seven point four percent. Now. That's a 67% increase. And they haven't done anything. Games Workshop has actually been losing money. They've been selling their IPs to basically anything. I will post a link to this article in the video description so you can read it for yourself. Okay. The company's reported revenue grew by 11.1% to $494.7 million for the first 53 weeks at the end of June 2024. Okay, and what got released then? Oh, that's right. The 30K series got released. 30K being Warhammer 40,000, but in the 31st millennium, i.e. you're looking at the Horus Heresy. So they want to go back on the previous law and revamp it and bring it back and have you saps pay for it. Let me express this to the guys in the back. Never buy Games Workshop. Don't. Just don't. And you want to know why? They had a, a, a very rare uh, model system that they had called, called Forge World. Forge World did all of their Titans, did all of their uh, 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 siege tanks like the Bane Blade and stuff until they made it into an actual kit. They made all of their, their, their siege basings, like Emperor Titans, Hound Titans, you name it. But you could not legally take any of them to a Games Workshop sanctioned tournament because they were not Games Workshop. 
let me explain that again. You've paid twenty two thousand two hundred and I think it was I think it was two thousand two hundred and fifty seven pounds and change for just the Warhound Titan body. Not the guns, not the arms, not the weapons, just the body. Do you wanna know how much I just paid for my Mini Cooper? Four hundred pounds. I'll say that again. I just paid four hundred pounds for a two thousand and six Mini Cooper with 77,000 miles on it and all it need, needed was a clutch cable. Fixed it. I fixed it right there, right outside the guy's house. Fixed it and drove it home. Paid him 400 pounds cash. And you just paid two and a half grand for a Warhound Titan body when I can easily go to Colts 3D or various other websites and get a royalty-free Warhound Titan body for free or maybe maybe five ten pounds and 3d print it off of my 3d printers over there that only cost me maybe two to three hundred pounds and about ten pounds in resin and i'm the mug not knowing that games workshop actually 3d prints all of their test prototype models i'll say that again for you in the back Yes, I have people that work at Games Workshop in the development department. I get sent their STL files all the time. I can't upload them because Games Workshop will take them down. I can print them though, and I have. And I've pointed out their glaring problems. And again... I've pointed it out. Gamza has pointed it out. That's another YouTuber. He's pointed it out. When you go to, to, to Nottingham HQ, when you go to Games Workshop's main flagship building, and you go in and you see that great big freaking you know, uh, display that they've got, you do realize that three of those Titans in that display are 3D printed, right? Right? You want to know how I know they were 3D printed? One, they did not have... The masters even cut yet to make prototype models. Two, look at the shoulder pads. You can see the layer lines from the 3D printer because whoever 3D printed it and tried to sand it down using Bondo and Christ knows what else didn't realize that the resin or the FDM print or whatever plastic they were using, it shrank and the Bondo didn't. So the Bondo cracked and you can still see the layer lines. Again, 3D printed. And those were the models that they wanted you to buy, pre-order wise. Oh look, you can pre-order this, this, this Titan, you can pre-order this, you can pre-order... They didn't even have the fucking Masters cut yet. Hypocrites much Games Workshop? Fuck, yeah! You got more leaks and more fucking and more people pissed at you because of that, that article and the fact that your shareholder, your boss, who has done absolutely fuck all for the player base, and I mean fuck all for the player base, other than literally try to put his hand into my fucking wallet and take out money that does not belong to him. Fuck you. Ain't happening. Is not happening. I don't even buy your paints. I buy Formula P3, or I buy um, pa uh, 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 Model Maker Panzer Series. Why? Or, heck, you know what? And this is going to really piss off Games Workshop. I even buy, uh, 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 um, what's his name, Duncan Rhodes. I even buy Duncan Rhodes' paints because they are a much better quality. Much better. They flow better, they mix better, they wet palette better. Nice work, by the way, Duncan. British family, uh, British manufacturing, British based, everything could not. Sa same as Opus Artists. I don't even buy Games Workshop brushes. I buy nothing GW. I only buy either Artist Opus because, again, an amazing painter, an amazing brush, an amazing quality, an amazing company. I support my local my local guys. Okay, so Artist Opus brushes, cherry. Okay, uh, uh, um. Duncan Rose's paints, cherry. 
P3 for Formula P3. They are a Utah based paint company. When I lived in Utah, I went to their main fucking guy's house and got the sa got sample bottles from him. He gave them to me and said, "Here, try them out for me, please." Cuz he literally saw one of my my I think it was my dark it was either my Dark Angels army or it was my Imperial Guard army. Fuck you. They're not called Astra Militarum. They're called Imperial Guard. Okay? End of. You're just pissed because you lost a copyright claim against fucking Lucasfilms to use the words Royal Guard. That's it. They're not called Astra Militarum. They're called the Imperial Guard. Get it fucking right. Anyway. I think it was my Guard army. Yeah, it was my guard army because he, he noticed the fact that I repurposed a whole bunch of World War II tanks. Basically, if you've not noticed, Imperial Guard tanks are basically World War I tanks with World War II tank bits on it. If you haven't noticed it. A Lehman Russ battle tank is a Mark III Churchill with side sponsons and a turret from a, a Panzer IV. That's it. Prove me wrong. I'll wait. You back? You looked at it, you googled it, you seen the images, point proven, thank you. So that's what I did. I bought a whole bunch of, of I think it was 135 scale, it was, it, no, was it 135? Anyway, I, I bought a whole bunch of, of, of World War One and World War Two tank kits and just kit bashed them and made my own custom Imperial Guard tanks. Because if you think about it, logically and logistically, okay, there is no fucking way Multiple different human races with different subspecies of human race are going to use the same genetic fucking template for their tanks. Not going to happen. Do you see Russia using Abram tanks? No. Do you see China using Challenger tanks? No. Why do we use Challengers and why does America use Abrams? Why does Germany use the Leopard? You, are you not getting it now? So are you not understanding Games Workshop? So there's absolute... And I, 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 I argued this point law-wise to the point where other Games Workshop staff stood there and like, this motherfucker's right. And you could say, well, it's a standard template machine. How many of them have been found? To date, only three have been found, of which one was fu fucking functional. The other two were not. So you've lost that argument, even from a law standpoint. I'm using your own law to beat you to death with your own law. Thank you. So, and he saw what I did to the, 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 the tanks and the army and everything else, and how I had them all painted up to look like... Uh, um, 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 Wehrmark, not Nazis, Wehrmark, and he was like, oh, and he looked, oh, the Death Corps of Korea, and I'm like, no, take a look at their faces, not a single gas mask, and he's like, what, I'm like, do you think the Death Corps of Korea is the only one who can dress like the, the German Wehrmark? <laughs> of course not, don't be silly, so, long story short, the guy fucking loved what I did, loved the paint job, loved everything else, he goes, I'm stuck my own painting company, could I use your... And I used to drive the 200... No, 380... 380 something miles from my house to his house and back again. So I used to put almost 700 miles on my fucking expedition to go up to his place in... Is it Orem? Or Ogden? Orem or Ogden? I can't remember. So I used to go up there, pick up these little boxes of paints. It'd be like six or seven paints. I think at one point there was like 12 bottles in there with little droppers and everything else. and what, like, Really quality and professional. Come back and I test them out and I say your white's not quite there yet. It's too milky. You need a little bit more pigmentation, a little bit less, and, and add a little bit more um, uh, uh, um, drying retarder because the paint's drying too quickly. Because again, you Utah humidity kind of thing. And I'm like, yeah, but again, it could be Utah and humidity. I don't can't take the paints to another fucking state where the humidity is different, you know, kind of thing. And he understood where I was coming from, and so he was tweaking his formula, tweaking his formula, tweaking his formula, and that's why I like P3 paints because I like. The developers that you can approach with constructive criticism, they take it to heart and they change it and, and work with it. Same as, um, oh god, what are they called? They do the speed paints formula. Um, it's gonna bug me. I'm legit, I can see a ton of their bottles in my paint thingy over there. Point is, 
they like their speed paints they're really good quality paints by the way if you really need to get knock out some junk like nurglings or goblins or whatever or tyranid or whatever out really quick perfect for that um i like those sort of companies that you can approach and say i think you've got an issue or a problem with this form with this color and they figure out it could be a formula issue they reissue it they apologize they even send you a free bottle of paint to replace the one that you you're having an issue with those sort of companies i respect because they take criticism to heart games workshop thinks that their shit is gold and it is diamond encrusted it is not okay you're not the only fucking miniature game in town you're not you are not not by a long shot and you think being nice to your warhammer fantasy community after you fucking butchered it by finally releasing four armies for under a hundred pounds less the hq of course you have to pay a hundred nothing is like to get a full two thousand point army because i looked at the chaos warbands one because i was like "Ooh, i'll think about getting that which i am but i thought to myself let me see about how much it would cost for me to 3d print my own i have the bases no joke i've got a bag full of bases i i i my small little six inch printer all it ever prints now is just bases there's 20 there's 40 there's 60 there's 80 there's 100 bases boop done that's it that's all it ever does my little six inch bases my nine inch does uh, uh, um monster size model so this is the this is the smaller print of my fulgrim i'm working on the larger fulgrim this is the 70 then this is the 56 mil the 75 mil is a lot bigger so I'm going to be doing one. I'm doing both, two of those. One I'm going to be uh, doing as a giveaway. The other one I'm going to be keeping for myself. Now, um, so the fact that the CEO, uh, the new CEO of Games Workshop, is just sitting on his ass, doing fuck all, not listening to feedback, because if you was listening to feedback, you would roll back your pathetic fucking attempts at trying to stop third party people from making content for your fucking game and you would stop selling your ips to bullshit fucking top joy and christ knows who else regicide this aside i mean look this if i go to my steam my, my steam profile real quick and i'll even bring it up if i go to my steam profile real quick you'll see how many 40k games i have the only one I'm, I don't have added to my Steam collection is Fire Warrior. And I have the original CDs for that. Let me explain. I have the original compact discs of 40k Fire Warrior where you get to play a Tower Ethereal. It's junk, by the way. The game is shit. Graphically, it was just shit. Um, so if we go to my library, look at that. We've got Dark Tide. Really good game. I like it. Retribution. Dawn of War. Uh. Dawn of War 3 is just trash. We've got Mechanicus. Don't even get me started on that thing. Regicide. It's just chess. And then we've got Warp Forge, which is their sad attempt at trying to make a fucking card game. Okay? It failed. You got Greedy. Stop trying to make Magic the Gathering. Not gonna happen. It's just not. I've even got some of their Warhammer Epic games. Again, still on CD. Thank you, uh, uh, GOG.com. Um, so just just stop, okay? You're, you're legit trying... Look, so you're, you're, you're just microtransaction, microtransaction, microtransaction. This is where Games Workshop's making their money. Is in their bullshit little microtransactions. Okay? Trust me. It's it's not worth it. It's It's just not worth it. That's all Regicide is, see? It's chess. Okay? Mechanicus, there's like 17 different fucking expansions. I'm not even joking. You go to the DLC for Regicide, look. There you go. You got the Heretics and you got the Omnissiah. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Why? If I'm sorry, but if I'm going to spend 40 quid, 50 quid, 60 quid, 70 quid, I've even seen people pay 80 pounds for the fucking ultimate edition of Dawn of War 3. Are you an idiot? Dawn of War 3 was shit. It fucking sucked. 
Dawn of War 1, Dawn of War 2. That's it. Dawn of War 3 was an absolute fucking joke. Absolute joke. This is why no one cares about fucking Dawn of War. Okay? You killed the series with Dawn of War 3. Okay? Yes, I know they've got Space Marine 1 and Space Marine 2 out now. Good for you. Do I care about it? Not really. Titus is Titus. Okay? He's going to fall to chaos no matter what. There. I kind of spoiled it for you. And besides, he's an ultra smurf. He ain't that good. I can list off at least five 30k era space marines that would make Titus their bitch. Khan being one of them. Not Khan right now. Not Khan the Betrayer now. I'm talking about Khan back in 30k. That dude made his own fucking Primark his bitch. So don't fucking go there. Khan is such a fucking mental case that he doesn't even follow his entire chapter anymore. He does his own fucking thing. He doesn't listen to fucking uh, 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 Agron. He doesn't listen to anyone else. He only listens to fucking Korn who talks to him in his head. That's all he talks to. That's all he cares about. Trust me, I know. I've got down there every fucking novel involving Khan. Khan could quite literally turn Titus into his condom and just fuck the universe with him if he wants to. Another one is... Um, Oh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Gabriel Seth from the fucking Flesh Terrors. Another one who could make him his bitch. Who else? Uh, Talamakon. There you go. Talamakon. Before. From, from the Emperor's Children. Before he fell to chaos. Talamakon. The silver the silver faced source swordsman. Fucking owned everyone back then. Horus even feared Talamakon at one point. Lucarius, another one who could fucking make Titus his bitch. Don't fucking go there. Don't fucking go there. You put Titus up against the weakest form of chaos. There, I said it. I'm sorry, Zench players, but you are the weakest form of chaos. Oh, if my suit gets a little pinprick. Oh, all its dust. Eh. Gone. What happens to a Nurgle Space Marine? Oh, look, a new tentacle. You are the weakest form of chaos. You are. You are the weakest form of chaos. But we're the changer of ways. No, you don't, because you don't change your ways, do you? Because if you did, you'd realise, oh, wait, our fucking space marines that are all just dust inside their fucking power armour are getting their fucking asses handed to them by a fucking Imperial Guardsman with a bayonet because we suck in close combat. Name a single close quarters combat unit a, a fucking Zench army can take. Name one. And don't even say Gorgons. Don't even say Gorgons. Go ahead. Name a Space Marine. Do they have assault packs? No. Do they have attack bikes? No. Do they have fucking uh, 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 jet bikes? No. Now. Does Nurgle have backpacks? No. They have wings. Does Nurgle take bikes? They used to. They could have. In 3rd edition. Until. The, the higher ups at 40k realised. Oh shit we just gave a Plague Marine toughness 7. Yeah. Instant kill weapons don't instant kill him anymore. So instead of. Removing the plus 1 toughness from the bike. And giving it say something like. I don't know plus one initiative they decided to just say death guard can no longer ride bikes what was that second edition it was either second or third edition i can't remember it was the one with the 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 guy's face is like turned like this and he's holding a fucking planet it was that that codex front cover seriously go through it take a look oh wait wait oh wait sorcerers get us okay you get a sorcerer on a flying disc. Are you going to charge your sorcerer into close combat quarters with corn berserkers? No. 
Uh, plague marines? No. Um, plague zombies? No. Uh, Imperial Guard? No. Demonets of Stanish? No. Bloodletters? No. Tau Fire Warriors? No. Then what fucking good are you? That's my whole point. That is my whole fucking point. Zinch is the most weakest form of the Chaos Gods. If you want to lose, take Thousand Sons. If you want to lose happy and have fun, take Slanesh. I said it. Unless you've got a shit ton of noise, Marines, take Slanesh. If you want to win, you take Death Guard. Everyone's like, what? When you take and hold an objective with Death Guard, watch how many CP points you win. Now, if you just want to kill, main, burn, kill, main, burn, and have fun, take a corn army. You're going to die horribly at range shots, but take a corn army because it's fucking hilarious. I got a Devastator squad. They fail their Black Rage. They charge right towards the enemy ah! with a fucking heavy bolter. Good luck. Used to happen to me all the time until I realized you either take Chaos Undivided, which means you can t still take any unit you want, because your, your, your Chaos Lord is Chaos Undivided, which means he doesn't favor any god in particular, and so the units you want now take up an elite slot instead of a troop slot. Okay, cool. But you still get to keep your Devastator squads, and they don't charge. So, if you're fighting Tyranids, Guard, Tau, um, Eldar, Dark Eldar, you take Heavy Bolters. You take Heavy Bolters or Assault Cannons. If you're fighting um, a tank-based Guard or a tank-based Tau, or, God forbid, a freaking Wraith Lord-based Eldar, you take Last Cannons. Bye! Have a wonderful time! Three squads of four, strength 10, AP 2, fuck your Terminators as well. Yeah. I know how to play competitively. I know how to play to have fun. I also know how to play and fuck over my op opponents. I used to work at Games Workshop. Anyway. My point is this. Games Workshop is just a greedy fat pig. You have to stop feeding the greedy fat pig. Don't buy their paints. Don't buy their Chinese knockoff brushes because that's exactly where they get them from. I'm sorry. And we're, no, no. James Workshop makes their stuff in house. No, they don't. They haven't made their stuff in house since 2012. They haven't. Their molds. What? Think about this for a second. How the fuck did the Chinese markets like Timu and, and Christmas, what else, get their hands on original sprue molds of older 40k? armies like space marines tau um orcs things of that nature they had the master fucking sprues you know the metal templates that they sandwich together inject the plastic they had those so if they are all in-house and yet they're in china let the penny drop let the penny drop they're not made in england then are they or you think because it says on the sprue, copyright Games Workshop, 1990 fucking one on some of their sprues still. But that means it's still made in England. <laughs> you poor deluded fucking fool. I've got a bridge to sell you and, and I've got beachfront property in Nevada if you're really interested. Dumb asses. You just don't get it, do you? Games Workshop is all about fucking sell high, buy as low and as cheap as we can. Do you not remember the horrible fine cast debacle where they moved certain heroes from white metal and plastic over to their fine cast resin and you would get them and the fuckers are bent worse than a fucking... They're bent worse than, 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 than a fucking... Killer whales fin at fucking SeaWorld. 
or they're bent worse than a fucking uh, a, a plastic straw being attacked by a blowtorch. Yeah. And even a little disclaimer saying, you might see some imperfections in your fine cast model that you you need to fill in with green stuff that you can buy optionally extra and you will have to wash your models in hot soapy water to get them to spring back to shape no bitch what part of fine cast do you not understand if you are literally saying that you are finely cast that means you are casting it to a higher fucking quality if this is your highest fucking quality i hate to see what your fucking worst is this is why you shut down fine cast because it was a joke because you are a joke i will say that in the back because you are a fucking joke and anyone who still fucking supports them. So Varak, yes, I'm calling you out. Varak, you have got to, you've got to stop fucking hyping up Gangs Workshop, man. You've got to stop. You're a fucking sellout for them, and I know you are. You're a paid fucking shield. This is why I stopped watching your fucking content, man. I'm sorry, but you are. You're a fucking paid shill. You are. Oh, I've got an insider. Yeah, I've got insiders too. And trust me, I've seen documents that were handed to you. So I know you're a fucking paid shill. Don't fuck with me, boy. You're a fucking shill. Games Workshop could take a shit on a fucking 90 mil fucking base and say, oh look, it's the new something of Nurgle. And you'd be like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's here guys, it's here! Because that is just who you are. You're a fat fucking overhyped piece of shit. That's all you are, and that's all I'm going to say about the matter. I hate your fucking guts, dude. You're a fucking sellout. And I cannot fucking wait for your own entire fucking fan base to turn on you. And when they do, it's going to be fucking glorious. It's literally going to be like watching a fucking bio titan getting eaten by a whole fucking army of termagants. And I'm just going to sit there, crack open a fucking beer and laugh my fucking ass off. You're a fucking shill. End of. Now Varric's been dealt with. Let's continue on. GW, you seriously fucking need to stop. And I, I cannot stress this. You need to fucking stop. You need to slow things fucking down. You need to stop jacking up the price and lowering the miniature count. Because that's not how fucking things work. As I said, you buy, you, you sell high and you give out and you spend low. That's how you're doing it. All of a sudden, a 20 box count of Space Marines. I remember when Space Marines used to be more than 20 in a box. I remember when you used to get fucking 40, 50, 60 Space Marines in a box. Where are they now? Oh, oh, we, 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 we're losing out on the fucking 3D printing market. So let's just make our Space Marines bigger and call them Primaris. That's all you did. Because you couldn't fucking shut down the 3D printers fast enough. Even though you yourselves are guilty of using 3D printers. You could not shut the fucking 3D printing websites down fast enough. You could not fucking copy pasta fucking cease and desist letters quick enough. So you decided to say, fuck it, we're not going to win this battle. Let's just phase out older Space Marines. Even though we've still got a shit ton of original fucking Space Marine box sets sitting on our fucking shelves gathering dust. And it's going to be toxic fucking stock for the next fucking 50 fucking years. Because we're fucking <laughs> mongoloids who don't fucking understand business. And so we're just going to say, fuck it. We're just going to resize them and call them Primaris. How many fucking Lieutenant Primaris Marines are out there now? How many fucking Sergeant Lieutenant... Uh, Sergeant fucking Primaris models are there now? How many fucking Chaplain Primaris models are there now? I lost count. And then you go and dip your fucking toe in the whole trans debate. There's always been female custodies. <coughs> no, there hasn't. Even by your own fucking law. No, there hasn't. There isn't. There never has. There never will. 
literally you just made the entire sisters of battle the sisters of silence and christ knows who else completely look at you like am i a joke to you because you are literally giving up 90% of your fucking fan base for 1.3% of the population, which does not fucking equate. And you think it's okay for you to sit on your ass and get 27% bonus. Are you fucking stupid? Whoever is on that board of directors, I will fucking, I, I would start demanding resignations. And if they don't, fire the fuckers and make sure you put them in so much litigation that they never see their golden parachutes, ever. In fact, that's the first fucking thing you take away. You take away their golden parachutes. You take away all their... Because they know that no matter what they do, they're getting a payout. They've got a life raft. Well, guess what? If you start drilling holes in that life raft, all of a sudden, they're going to start doing their fucking level best to keep that ship afloat. That's called common fucking sense. Something you can't buy. It's something you're born with. And if you don't have it, you shouldn't be in businesses. Should ya? Now, that said. I am not against capitalism. I'm not. If you want to make your money, make your money. But do it in an ethical way, mum, dude. Do it in an ethical way. Don't don't shove off your shit to China and say it's... No, it's boxed in the UK. The box is printed in the UK. The shit that's inside the box? China! Exactly. That's a lie. You can bring manufacturing back to your home country. You can bring jobs back in and make your economy better. But you can't if all you care about is your bottom line. See, this is why in, out of all the cultures in all of the world, there's one country's culture I respect the most. It's not Britain. It's not Ireland. It's not America. Although America's second, third. It's Japan. In Japan, they don't have janitors in their schools. The kids clean the schools. Every single one of them. They take on early responsibilities of being a young adult by keeping their schools clean. Same as train stations. They have volunteer points where people, elderly people, nine times out of ten, it's elderly people, volunteer their time to clean the trains. Because they want to give back to their country. And in return, they get free travel on the train. So they can go from Osaka to, to Fukushima. They can go, they go, they, they can go wherever the fuck they want. All they gotta do is just go from one side of the train to the other and just clean it. That's it. That's it. Now, business-wise, why do I respect Japan most? From 1999 to 2007, Honda was on the verge of bankruptcy. No one knows this. Well, a few people do. But Honda was on the verge of bankruptcy. And Suzuki was looking at buying them out. But before Suzuki even put in a payment to, to, uh, to attempt to sit down to talks, they said to him, How much did your CEO make? And they said, well, our CEO makes X amount of yen. And they said, so your business is failing because of his decisions, but he has this much money coming to him no matter what? And they said, yes. And, he goes, and they were like, well, we're not buying your company. We're not paying him to destroy this business. So you know what that CEO did? He agreed and said, you know what? You're right. All of this is on me. I'm taking responsibility for it. I do not want a single penny until our company is prosperous and starts making a profit. They didn't lower the wages of the line workers. They didn't start buying cheaper materials. They didn't start importing in this and that and this and that. No, they didn't do any of that. The fucking higher ups 
who did it took responsibility. They committed business seppuku, if you will. And you know what? Within a year, within one fucking year, they became financially soluble again. They went from being in the red, and I mean so far in the red, that they ended up in the black. And why do you think Honda is one of the biggest fucking automotive competitors to the world now? Because Honda only cares about keeping Honda alive. And they do it a smart way. They don't do it the corrupt, stick coins in my pockets way while I'm leaving the ship as it's sinking way. No, they're not looking at grabbing the cutlery and the silverware to throw into the fucking boat and then fucking, oh, fuck the baby, we can have another one. No, they're not doing that. CEOs, managers, line managers, you name it, they all said, you know what? It starts with us. We knew that this was wrong, but we still went ahead and did it anyway. The fault lies with us. It doesn't lie with our workers. And so they all didn't get a single bonus. They took the exact same pay as their line workers. So why do you think the line workers at Honda immediately got a pay increase? Right after they were in the black. Every single one of them got such a pay increase. That they could actually afford to buy their own property. And their own cars. Why doesn't another business do it like that? Why don't you Games Workshop. Why don't you step up and say you know what. We're overpaying this fat fucking pig. Who's sitting up there. Quick. <laughs> And he's fucking over the fucking player base, he's fucking over the fan base, he's fucking over the law, he's fucking us all over, and we're paying him extra for it. Are you fucking stupid, you simp cucks? Nut up! Tell him no. Tell him stop. Tell him no more. In fact, just take it away from him. And tell him. You will get this back when you fix this. But you won't. Because you're gullible. You're all fucking gullible. You're all fucking stupid and you're all fucking brain dead. And not a single fucking one of you know what it takes to run a truly fucking successful business. Another case in point. Take a look at the Arizona Ice Tea Company. They've been around since the 80s. All of their competitors have either gone bankrupt or have swapped doing have stopped doing iced tea and have moved on to other products. You wanna know why Arizona iced tea still only sells their iced tea for 99 cents? They don't have to raise the price. Why should they punish their purchasers, their fan base, their their enjoyers of their product? Why should they why why should they punish them to make a profit? You wanna know what they did? They own their own factories, they own their own supplies, they own their own everything. His wife does the can designs, his sons work for his company. He owns it outright, he's worth six point eight billion fucking dollars, and yet he hasn't jacked up the price. He hasn't sold his company to some god awful corporation like PepsiCo or fucking Coca-Cola. No. He's decided to stay in it and make it a family business and it's a it it it, it it's stupidly effective. Both his boys love working with his dad. He gets to have a business lunch dinner with his wife and his two kids every fucking day. Every fucking day. With a successful business. Selling a product that people enjoy. Hell, I buy Arizona iced tea here in the UK. I have that shit imported in. There's a little store not far from me. I purposely ask him to import it in for me. And I even pay extra. And you know what? He's like, why does it? Why did it only cost me like 50p? I'm like, because that's literally their recommended retail price. He's like, no man, I've got to charge at least £2.50. I'm like, Why? What's your, what's your overheads here? You're telling me that you're overpriced milk or you're overpriced bread or you're overpriced chocolate bars or you're overpriced booze or you're overpriced tobacco doesn't cover your minuscule loss that you would make on setting iced tea. 
And he just sat there and he was like, Because you just don't get it through your thick fucking skull. Why do you think companies like Walmart exist? And why Walmart crush their competitors? Yeah, sometimes they do it legally, which is wrong in my opinion. And it is. It's, it's strong arming the law in the wrong direction. But if they see a company come out like like Kmart, for example, the whole, the whole Mart Wars. I was there. There was a Kmart in my town and a Walmart. I would go in there, watch a can of soup go from a dollar nine to a dollar to 75 cents to 50 cents to 25 cents. And then I'd go into Kmart and see the exact same can for 24 cents. And I'm like, a week ago, that can was a dollar nine. Why is it 24 cents now? Is it bad? Looked at the date. It's within date. And then Kmart put it went it went back up to 25 cents because Walmart price matched. But the one thing Walmart couldn't do is the one thing Kmart did. Same as Albertsons, their grocery store chain. Albertsons used to do a 10 for 10. So you get 10 cans of whatever it is, soup, salad, you know, it could be anything you want. Soup, uh, Chunky Man. I, used to, I always used to get the Camp- Campbell's Chunky Mans. And I would get 10 cans of Campbell's Chunky Man, which is like usually a $2.10 each. And I'd get 10 cans for $10, saving me over $10. So I'd eventually say, fuck it. And I'd get 20 cans. And I would have 20, and, and I had enough cans of Campbell's Hungry Man. Uh, hungry, it was the Hungry Man Beef Chunky. That was the one I loved. Oh, I fucking missed that. And I had my pantry stocked. Stocked. From the floor to the ceiling. Stocked. And I would rotate the dates. And sometimes I would take a great big belly pot, and I would take four or five cans of that stuff, put it in there, and put a little extra ground beef in there and just stir it up. And I'd serve that to, to me and my mates. And they fucking loved it. I fucking loved it. Potatoes, carrots, uh, 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 meat. Fucking, uh, you know it was beef. It was either like a beef patty, like a burger patty that they cooked and cut up or, or whatever. But it was mm, with, with, with some fresh baked bread rolls. That's what I used to have with my mates. And my mates used to love coming and hanging out at my place. Every time, every time I had a project, like a race car to do, or a dirt circle track car to do, and I had my friends coming over to help me, they knew they were getting a can of Campbell's, <laughs> Campbell's Hungry Man Junkie, <laughs> and, and a cold beer. They fucking knew it, and they loved it, to the point where they would come over just to hang out, and they'd be like, what you cooking tonight? And I'm like, I've got hot dogs on the grill, yada yada, yada. They're like, you know Campbell's? I'm like, fine, I'm going to get you a, not sponsored by Campbell's. And I'd go in there and say, grab a couple of cans of Campbell Chunky, and they didn't even put the hot dog in there, it fucking tastes good. And I do miss that. But that's how Kmart in my town beat Walmart. Walmart couldn't sell enough. And so eventually they just put the prices back up to normal, which is like a dollar, dollar nine, a dollar ten plus tax. And Kmart beat them on that. But because Kmart knew they would lose money on each can they sold. But it's amazing how their flat screen TVs went up $10, or their toasters went up $2, or their coffee pot machines went up a dollar. But you don't notice that. Because that's it's called it's called spreading the load. Lightening the load. You, you, when you're on ice that's cracked, you don't just stomp. You spread the weight. And that's exactly what Kmart started to do. And yeah, Kmart did did eventually sadly go the way of the dodo that was because of poor business acumen they did not apply it correctly plus the fact that walmart had sam's club backing them up that's how sam's club loses money on all of the food that they sell at their sam's club stores you know that right everything even if they sold it for like 10 pounds each because we've got sam's clubs here in the uk even if they sold their sam's club spaghetti instead of it being like three pounds a bowl if they sold it for like five pounds a bowl they would still lose money but they make it up in the other things that they sell in the shops. Who needs a fucking pallet load of, of like 16 gallon drums of mayonnaise? Fucked if I know, but my Sam's Club sells it. And I'm telling you, that's where they make their profit back. 
So you, yes, you may lose a bit of profit on one thing, but you're going to make it same, same, same. This is the thing. It's like it's it's a standard business practice. It's called repeat business. Okay, you treat a comp, you treat a, a, you you treat someone right. Okay, say a customer comes to my business. I I I restart my my Jiffy Loop thing. Okay, they start coming to me, and I treat them right. They come back to me. A year later, they got a new car. I do the same thing. They keep coming back to me. They keep coming back to me. Word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. And all of a sudden, I now have to have people book me in advance. And that's how bad it got sometimes. Especially during the summer. And you know what? I loved it. I used to get up at 6 in the morning. Come home at 9 o'clock at night. Tired, covered in dirt, covered in grime, covered in oil. Covered in grease, covered in fucking Christ knows what else. I would shower, use that orange man, the orange soap stuff that you can get from Summit. You guys, you, you've got Summit magazine, Summit car magazine, you know what I'm talking about. I take some of that simple green orange stuff thingy or whatever it was, that had the soap, and just watch the grease just fall off of me. And I would then come out, eat my dinner, and fall asleep on the sofa, and then drag my ass to bed. And then rinse and repeat. And I would do that seven fucking days a week. Monday to Sunday. Non-stop. The only time I ever stopped doing that. Was when I had anything to do with my stepdaughter. Taking her to dance class. Recitals. You name it. Other than that. Grind, 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 grind. And the one time. The one time. I actually put my business on hold. And stopped doing anything. Was when my wife got sick. And I become a stay-at-home dad to help take care of my stepdaughter. I ended up going to night school and becoming a fucking uh, 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 home help for my wife. A registered home help for my, for my wife, helping you know with stretching her back, massages, things of that nature, because she had um, lumbar spinal stenosis, and I helped her with that, getting her in and out of bed, in and out of the bath, in and out, you know, just helping her throughout the day, being that, doing that, and then I decided, how am I, how how am I gonna make an income? I need, I got bills to pay, how am I going to get an income, we were fighting with SSI, it was fucking horrible, because they weren't paying out, even though she, she, she qualified three times over, even the judge said you qualify three times over, I have no fucking clue why these people were objecting, but they did, and it just dragged it out for like, almost a year and a half, no money coming in, if it wasn't for the LDS church, not a Mormon, but my ex-wife was, it is, they helped us with food. They don't, don't pay the bills. They don't pay my internet. They don't, don't pay my, my, my power. They don't pay my hot water. They don't, don't pay my, my gas. They don't pay my land tax. You know? And so I thought, I'll try Twitch. And that's how I got started on Twitch. I was streaming from an old, clapped out hallway with a green sheet, green, green, green sheet behind me. And we had a spare bedroom that we was renting out to someone. And their rent money barely, barely kept some of the utilities going. Barely. And there were times when we didn't even have gas. And I had to take space heaters out. And put them in you know, like the hallway and everywhere else and whatnot. Put blankets up on doorways to keep the fucking warm air in certain parts of the house so the pipes didn't fucking freeze. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know fucking hardships. I've been fucking homeless. Trust me, this may look like a shithole to you. But to me, this is my castle. So fuck you. To all you fucking trustafarians and, and all these fucking people that have fucking mummy and daddy's fucking trust fund money living in a fucking $3 million man, uh, apartment. I don't know why you fucking paid $3 million for an apartment, you fucking moron. You could have took that fucking $3 million and bought yourself a nice fucking house and a shit ton of fucking land. But no, Captain da 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 And you know who I'm talking about? Hasabi. You stupid twat. Fucking blows it on. And, and, but don't even go there. You're not a fucking communist. You stupid cunt. You're not a communist. You're a Porsche driving fucking trustafarian. That's all you are. You're a wannabe. You've never even fucking. You don't even know how to fucking fire an AK-47. You puff. I've had fucking AK shot at me. You stupid twat. So fuck you. You ain't no commie. I've killed commies. You ain't no fucking commie. The only good commies are dead commie. 
So call yourself a communist around me and see how fast you stop breathing, boy. Now, that side of me very rarely comes out anymore. <sighs> I've, got to, uh, I've got to step up my medication a bit. Anyway, guys, this video has been going on for an hour. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, thanks for sticking around and watching it. If you stuck around and watched it. Anyway, guys, till then. Take care. Sorry for the rant. Bye.